I think we got the possum up the tree that time. Um, well, this us the music is uh, usually, this kind of music is usually passed on from person to person in what they call the oral tradition, or people learn it by ear, they listen to somebody else play it, and they learn it. Very little of the music um, was written down. Uh, these days, more and more of it is being notated and, and written down for people that can read music. Uh, but generally, people go to festivals and they learn tunes from from other people and um, pass them on. They bring them back to their community, teach people at the jam sessions they're at. Uh, so the music um, is, it gets passed on. Sometimes in that in that uh, procedure process, it gets um, it gets folk process. We call it so. Sometimes tunes. Uh, change a little bit or people have different versions or sometimes the uh, names of the tunes change so people be the same tune but there'll be different names depending on what uh, part of the country and so I think we have one here that we call tune of a thousand names but I think some other names for it are I'll call it lead out lead out no, too young to marry crooked stove pipe crooked stove pipe, so Missouri, meal. Stove. Missouri meal okay so uh, can we do that tune, you think? Sure. <coughs> Which one? Tune of a thousand names. A Missouri meal or for good stone pie. <laughs> <laughs> it's in D anyway. <laughs>
So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is how people used to entertain themselves. Oftentimes this music was played for <coughs> dances. People would get together initially, um, they'd go to uh, a neighbor's house, they'd have a small gathering of people, uh, dance on the front porch or in the living room of a person's house, and then uh, as communities got bigger and people were able to travel around a little more, uh, they added community dances. And people are still doing that today. And in Urbana, we have a uh, community dance. And Drew is the president of the Urbana Country Dancers right now, I believe. By my good fortune, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the Urbana Country Dancers and, and what they do? Sure. Uh, Urbana Country Dancers was formed about 20 years ago. Um, and we meet every, uh, almost every other Friday night at the uh, Phillips Center in Urbana. And we have live string band music. People play, uh, local bands play. Sometimes we have bands from uh, farther afield. Um, and about 40 to 60 people might show up on any given <coughs> evening. Yeah. And we dance. We dance. And they, they, do they uh, teach the dances there? How they uh, yes. Uh, they're, um, all dances are called by a uh, local or non-local uh, caller, and every dance is taught. Uh, part of the aspect of community dancing is that everybody can do it, so every dance is taught from the beginning, and uh, beginners can dance with more experienced dancers. And do you have to have any kind of special uh, costumes or anything? Yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing that distinguishes it. <laughs> um, there is no uh, particular dress code. Um, uh, a lot of women like to wear skirts, but many don't, and some men do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, and so, uh, it's just for anybody who wants to participate, young and old. Um, yeah, it's best have. if we have, you know, kids to to um, the age of hundred years old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've had uh, at our dance, our last dance, we had. Um, Two ten-year-olds and um, like an eighty-nine-year-old in the yeah. same line, yeah. and we dance uh, contra dances, which is a, a, a form of dancing that kind of uh, mostly grew in New England from English country dancing, and we also do square dances, which also originally country dance, but uh, was more popular in the South and in the Midwest. They kind of got all mixed up.